G'day listeners and welcome back to another episode of the Keeper League podcast. We're the AFL fantasy podcast that doesn't talk about the superstars. We only talk about the lesser knowns and the players who are going to bring value to your draft and Keeper League teams. My name's Hef and today I'm joined by a good mate of mine. Uh, not many people have heard this guy before, uh, but he is a member of my league, a fellow league member. He is the two-time uh, champion of our league, premiership winner of our league. Uh, welcome to the show, Pugs. How you going, mate? All right. Thanks for having me. <laughs> no problems. Now, for, there's not going to be many people out there that don't know Pugs, <laughs> but if there's anyone you want to talk to about Melbourne, I reckon this guy is the ultimate Melbourne nuffy. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, it's probably up there. <laughs> there's not many of us around. Well, well, that's the thing. I actually struggled to find a Melbourne uh, support and actually um, get him on the show. So, uh, yeah, that's the uh, main, main reason why I've got you on. But, um, look, I'm, I've got no doubt that you will know everything we need to know about these Melbourne players. So, all good uh, on this end for me. Sweet. Um, so, yeah, Melbourne, describe their season last year for us, really. I was pretty good up until halfway, and everyone said we'd just put our name on the cup. Um, <laughs> and then I think the short preseason got to them. They, they just looked to die yeah. in the second half, and then a couple of injuries of no key forward, and yeah. uh, Petraka broke his leg. Yeah, that doesn't help. Played with a broken leg. <laughs> um, yeah, so... Uh, it is just, it is. It's hard to do it back to back, isn't it? But well, what, still, what, finish seconds. So. Well, what are your thoughts this year? Is, is anything going to change? Are you going to go with the tried and true, or do you think there's anything going to change? And anything that could affect fantasy at all? Do you reckon? Yeah. Well, obviously, the big thing for fantasy is Gorn and Grundy. Yeah, for sure. Um, and not so much for the they're obviously too good for the pod, but that that's a position. So that's a half forward flank or a half back flank because they're going to play him. You're not going to just get Grundy and yeah, yeah. have someone him as a come back out one. Side, so yeah. someone has to come out, yeah. so, which that. I think it will be a half forward flanker. So Yeah, yeah, one of those kind of less important positions. Yeah, exactly. Someone that potentially could be handy elsewhere if we had them in. Yeah. Well, yep. anyways, we'll get stuck into the show. So just to remind everyone what we're doing this preseason, things are a bit different. We're talking about undervalued players, breakout contenders, and stash options. So we're going to get stuck straight in. And the first one I want to talk about is Christian Salem. So – um. Injured last year, it was a knee, wasn't it? I can't actually remember. It was a knee and then- um, Shoulder later There was something, something later yeah, as yeah. well, yeah. Um, average 73.8 on the back of that last season. Um, do you think he bounces back this season? We don't really have to worry about him? I think lock him away. Yeah. yeah. He's, uh, he'll, he'll come straight back. And he, uh, by all accounts, he's flying on the track as well. So Yeah, that's good to hear. So yeah, don't really have to worry about that one. But he's definitely yeah. going to be dropping, you know, just if you're playing like an inexperienced league where- Everyone goes by averages. He's going yeah. to be down the order yeah. a bit. So just make sure you've got him uh, stashing your rankings high up because he'll be a lot better than that 73.8 last year yeah. Um, yeah, presents. Uh, next one, James Harms. So he's added a bit of value to himself with forward status, just purely because forwards are so scarce this year. But he's the kind of player that actually just plays everywhere and he's really only fantasy relevant when he's in the midfield, really. Exactly. So yeah. where do you see him playing in 2023? Uh Borderline best 22. All right. I, especially with that, what we are talking about before with Gorn and Grundy. Yep. I reckon he's the one that's in trouble in the off season. He obviously got told to explore his options. Yep. Um, I've, I've, now that I've finally traded him to Kays. I was going to say, did Kays <laughs> bring him in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got him for Dugowie. Yep. I got Dugowie for him. So, yep. yeah, I've I've got worries that he will be sub yep. or, and, or just playing – as a forward. Yeah. And he that's not going to be any good. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm kind of in the same boat. I just don't see how he gets a midfield gig like the days of old because no. the midfield's way too strong now. The only three times he got, he gets games when people are injured and things like that. Exactly. Anyway. And so, yeah. yeah. And you've, I reckon you've got players. We'll talk about like players like Tom Sparrow and stuff. Or when the wings are ready, they're exactly. going to take over yeah. from him anyway. Yeah. So, I reckon he's in trouble this year. But the four status might give people a bit of hope there. But I reckon yeah. just calm and your expectations. If there's an injury that gets him in the side, yeah. then, you know, he's definitely worth a late or mid to late round yep. fly because yep. if there's an injury, he could come in and yeah. play a mid forward role. Yeah. Mm. No, I agree. But um, yeah, hold your expectations on him. That's yep. all. Um, well, the next one we'll move on to is Lockie Hunter. I just want to know, like, why was he recruited, do you think, at Melbourne? And what does this mean for the likes of, you know, established wingers like James Jordan? Like, what's going to happen? Yep. So, death of James Jordan. Oh, no. <laughs> I think. Um, I Hunter is... He's exactly what we need. I'm not sure if you watched these a lot last year. They went down the left-hand side yeah. every single time okay. to Gorn and Lang that was Langdon's wing. Yeah. And the other wing was just sort of – he's the defensive holding wing. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, I think Hunter will be – he can't. He won't play defensive. He'll play attacking. Yeah. Well, with the speed um, of the game and stuff. That's right. As well, so. And everything – and I think every coach is saying 
we're trying to move fast. We're trying to move fast this year. So yeah, I think he'll be fantasy relevant, but where I don't know. Don't expect what he was like two years ago. I think yeah, it was, he was the dogs. Close to 100 yeah. type thing. And he has got an elite winger on the other side as well. So yeah, and they, which the, they're going to continue to use. Yeah, yeah. so they're going to have to mix it up between them. But I think he'll still – he like he surely is around about the 70 to 75 mark. Yeah, yeah. And and we'll have the odd game that probably ha- has a really good score. Yeah, he's a, he's still only mid-only though these days. Isn't he? Remember as that one season he had four status? Yeah, he had four status, yeah, but yeah. not anymore. But yeah, James Jordan, the likes of him, he's uh, – he might – suffer a bit from that. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Well, we'll move on to James Jordan because I did yep. have him as a breakout contender because he fits the mould of the kind of what's he coming to his fourth year but third year of playing. Is that correct? Or third year? Oh, he's third yeah, year, he, he didn't play his first year. Yeah, okay. Yep. He got delisted and then re- Okay. Pretty yeah. rookie. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I thought he was primed for a breakout, but the, yeah, the arrival of Hunter has basically stifled that. Yeah. Can he still do it though? Like, is there somewhere else he can play? Like, a lot of people, like, all right, I seem to remember maybe one or two games in his first year. You know how he had that hot midfield um, yep. start? And then he was kind of playing outside a bit more, but then it kind of felt like he was either playing halfback or getting a lot of his ball along the halfback line anyway. Do you reckon he could, you know, transition to something like that? He's the, the, the worst thing about him. He's the perfect sub candidate because yeah. he can play every position. Okay. Bit like, bit like Harms, though, really. Yeah. I, I'd think he maybe passes Harms. Yeah. Um, well, he was the sub in the grand final too, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And and he was in the team all well, both years, last year and year. He was in the team the whole year up until the end of the season. Yeah, it's And hard, he gets dropped. So there's, I reckon he's first in if someone gets injured. All right, so we're going to move on to the stash options now. So Jake Bowie. Uh, look, is he a breakout option or is he a stash option? I've got him in the stash because I just don't see him really breaking into that best 22 just yet. He does look like a fantasy type. What, what's your opinions on Bowie? I, yeah, I reckon he's breakout. Yeah, okay. Breakout. Yeah. Move him up. Yeah, I reckon. I reckon he's in the side. Um, b- d- despite what a lot of people are saying, I don't think Brayshaw's in defence. Yeah, he's, okay. he's in the midfield. Yeah, yeah. I think and that's even, a general consensus there, yeah. yeah. And even the GM, uh, footy GM, Alan... Richardson today said he compliments Petrarca Oliver all yeah. of that well. So yeah, um, and I think that's where Bowie slips in. Um, Melbourne always talk about having a back seven, yeah, not a back six, yeah. So I reckon he yeah he fits in there. Um, Who are your prime movers out of defence? Because like last year I thought it would be breakout time for him just from how much Salem missed, but yeah, it was. And again, he played a fair chunk, but then um, as soon as Salem came back, he went out. And what he he played that much AFL, he actually wasn't eligible for the VFL finals. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, he didn't. The scoring just didn't come, and I don't know if that's because it just didn't. The Melbourne just weren't playing that well at the time. Yeah. But, um, he just watched him in the VFL when he went back, and he he's just a level above. Yeah. Okay. And that this is his third year, so people always talk about the third year <laughs> yeah, breakout. Correct, but, correct. Um, I'm not expecting him to be an elite defender, but I reckon he could push the 80 and above. Yeah. Well, that's um, like in a keeper leagues and draft stage. Exactly. That's all you want, really. Yeah. Like, you can't really ask for too much more than that. Um, so, if I, he can get to that eventually. Yeah. If he put, I think he, he, he passes Hibbard at some stage. Yeah, yeah. Whether it's, oh, for sure. Yeah. And I think they'd want to have them both in there. Yeah. Apparently, Hibbard's going well as well in yeah. training. Or mind you, it's pre-season, everyone is. Yeah, but, true. All the reports say that. Yeah. So, yeah, I reckon he'll... I, I, if I was to put it... Have like have a go either way. I reckon break out. Yeah, and, and the worst case he is a stash option anyway. Yes, that's then, right. Like, yeah. yeah, he should yeah. be. He should come good. So mm. hold on to Bowie regardless. Um, the other one also is Tom Sparrow. I've still got him as a stash option just because I don't see him getting a crack in that midfield. But it could be handy as that forward that rotates through the middle. Um, do you think he does get a, more of a permanent gig because midfield is not old or anything like that? So I, what's the go? I can't see it. I so just do you think that he might move on to another club and re- you know they well, might reap the opportunities? Possibly. Also? Yeah. Um, the only one that maybe comes out of there is Viney. He's the older one and the one that, you know, he's just a workhorse. Yeah. But at the same time, he can't play anywhere else. Yeah, so, true. Um, yeah, it just depends whether he's happy playing that role. Um, he had got a bit of wing time last year as well. Yeah, he but, did actually. I remember um, that. I'd, whether he still get like with Hunter in in the rotation yeah. midfield and wing. Well, a lot of teams do actually that. rotate through their wings. Like they yeah. usually have three, four, you know, players that actually go through exactly. there. Exactly. And Melbourne have well, they have Langdon and Alex Neil Bullen as well, who they play like ninety percent game time. Yeah. Which just means you don't have to rotate that side of the ground. Yeah. So they can sort of limit their rotations, which is good for players like Sparrow who can rotate wing, midfield, and forward. Yeah, of course. But. 
does that help his scoring? Nah, probably not. No. That's it. And that's the issue with a lot of wingers, really. Then A lot of them are rotating so much that they're not you know, holding down the spot to actually yeah, score as well. Yeah, that's right. So, yeah, no, I don't know. Uh, Thomas Barrow, I think if he can get to another club, I think, and you know, get a permanent CBA, like, you know, CBA bump, um, permanent midfield role, mm. I think it would be the goods. But, yeah, I don't Looking know. Looking huge this year. Is he? Yeah, bogged up massively. Oh, big pipes. Yeah, huge. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> all right. Um, well, that's kind of all the ones that I had. Have you got any additions before we get on to the questions? Uh, I have um, a bounce back for Tom McDonald. Yeah, okay. Apparently, he is absolutely flying. And you need a to, key target. And we know what forwards are like this yeah, year. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it could be we, the year of the key forward. Yeah. Fantasy. And we know what he's done in the past as well. Yeah. Um, don't expect it for the whole year, but he, he could be a really handy I don't know, F4. Yeah, no, that's um, probably the range, yeah. Yeah. Especially, like, I think it was two seasons ago, he had a cracking start to the year. Always seems to get injured, but can put up some big scores on his day. And like I said, I reckon if you're getting a 70 to 75 from a forward, you're having a good time this yeah. year. So especially yeah. when that when you get to 4 or 5 range, mm. F4 or F5 range, that's what you're, all you're looking for. Like someone like Tim Memory, I'm keeping probably this year just because I know he can probably average around yeah. the 75 mark type thing. Yeah. So, yeah, it's going to be a difficult one, especially with our league. We've shifted from 4 forwards to 5 yes. forwards. So. Yeah, still trying to wrap my head around that. <laughs> yeah, yes. we're going to cover those <laughs> ones. But anyway, um, yep. well, if that's all the additions, we'll move on to the questions in a second. But thank, uh, I just want to thank a few gold members before we do that. So um, thank you to the following members here. Henry McIntosh. Daryl Smith, Alexander Binks, Kevin Paul, Phil Brackier, Nathan Ayres, Mason Davey, uh, Benjamin Tyrell, Richard Newen, and Kyle Brett. Thank you to all those fantastic gold members uh, keeping the podcast afloat. Um, just a reminder for the gold members, uh, we've got some rankings going up at the moment. Also got the breakout tracker and our handy fantasy spreadsheets up there as well. Um, basically, if you sign up as a member, you're supporting this podcast and you keep it going and delivering you an episode each week. So there's a link in the description below if you do wish to to sign up so please support the podcast if you can all right let's get stuck into some listener questions here so the first one comes from uh, at gorn fritchen uh can you see van royan taking brown's place with fingers crossed uh, emoji um no not taking his place do you see van royan getting a game though yes okay yep. i cool. reckon he'd get probably at least 10 games yeah and, and there's every chance that once he gets in not being able to get him out. But I believe him and Tom McDonald are the the switches for each other. Yeah, of course. Um, but Ben Brown isn't training at the moment. He's just yeah, doing okay. light duties. So there's every chance he does start off playing. Yeah. Ben um, Brown's always seen in and out though. Yeah, and I think Melbourne maybe will manage him in ma- uh, through the season. Yeah. It's sort of like what Geelong have done historically over the years with their their key forwards and yeah, fair enough. older players. Yep. Um, Van Ruin's probably more of the classic type. They're going to be cheap and not a yep. huge scorer, though. He's not someone that yeah. you'd really be targeting. I, will, I probably wouldn't target him, that's all. No. And, yeah, you, you, he's probably going to be there next year. Yeah. Like, you'd not, I wouldn't waste a pick on him. Yeah. Um, you get back and yeah. put back into the draft pool, you mean? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. of course. Yeah. Yep. Probably not worth picking up just yet. Um, Richard Eliadis asks, uh, Cozzy Pickett, what does he average this year? What are your thoughts? Is he stuck forward? Does he get some midfield rotation? Uh, what are your thoughts? The track watchers from all the blogs and everything I read yeah. say so he is BOG of preseason. Yeah. Um, he's flying and he's getting put into centre bounces. Of course, you have your two sides in pre-season, yeah. so it's hard to know what's going on I reckon on pre-season now. last year is doing the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, one thing that will, is good for players like Cozzy and Alex Neil Bullen is that we've got the tall targets now, and yeah. you've got tall targets up the ground all the way down. They'll be able to get to stoppages and get some more possessions and stuff, whereas last year it was getting in, intercepted quite a lot because Ben Brown was the only option. Yeah, okay. So there might be a few more points there, for maybe some tackles. Yeah. But um, I think Cozzy, natural progression, he's kicked 40 goals two years in a row yeah, in his first two seasons. What's the average, though, in those years? I reckon he can get to that 75. Okay. I'm not, I am not. reckon 70 is probably around, like, yep. best case for me because I've owned him for a, for a couple yeah, of years, I think. And, um, yeah, I don't love owning him, but um, he always plays each week and he's always handy for a bench score. So well, he's got to show Port what he can do. Yeah, well, if he's coming, then, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Um, all right, at uh, Russ with a bunch of numbers after it. Um, is Sparrow worth a punt in redraft? 10-team uh, league, we keep 20 players each. Where would you draft him? It's a tricky one. So what's that, 10 teams? You'd, you'd reckon he'd be – do you reckon he's, like, pushing to the F4 range or he's an F5 range or is he even a forward on your starting forward line at all? Mm, it's tough. What did he average last year? Do you have any idea, roughly? I can find it out for you, but... Um, I reckon I looked it up not long ago, and it was 
low 70s. Yeah, okay. I'll yeah. have it in like one second. Oh, but yeah. I don't know. Like as a forward option, the 62 it was. So, 62. Yeah, yeah. Oh. So hey. there's some intrigue just with that forward status. Like if you can get a bit mm. more of a run, that could be a 70. That pushes you into that F4, F5 range, I reckon, this season. I think the only danger is uh, if you're stashing him, there's every chance by the time he's even remotely fantasy relevant. He won't be a full. Yeah, player. that's true. Yeah. You might get him a good on that one good year transition year when yeah. he goes into the if midfield. Yeah, if you're lucky. Yeah. 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 Don't yeah. See. And then if he ends up in the Tuzo as well, which is a possibility, probably not, but if he does and he plays midfield back there, you lose your status that way as well because your VFL count, games count as well. Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't so realise yeah, that. Yeah, if you're playing so. enough there. So yeah. someone look, look at someone like um, uh, Will Phillips from uh, North Melbourne. Forward yep. last year, didn't play a game, but lost his midfield status oh, because course. he played played midfield and VFL. Mm. So, yeah, that kind of stuff happens as well. So, that could really bite you too. Although, I do think he's best 22, so you don't have to worry about that. Oh, I don't, yeah, I yeah, think yeah. so too. Yep. Um, at Warner Brothers AFL, uh, do Bowie and Rivers hit fantasy relevance next year as defender premiums um, or at least 85-plus players in the next couple of years? Um, so, we already talked about Bowie, but what do you think about Rivers? There's so much hype about him two years ago and we've all died yeah, off. Yeah, and I loved him when he came on. He looked silky, he looked good, but I reckon he's turned into the Hibbard mould. He's going to be a lockdown yeah. defender, small, he, medium defender. Yeah, well, there was always talk about he just couldn't run out games as well. I like, always played yeah. low time on ground for a halfback flanker, which was really yeah. unusual. And even last year, he had he had a lot of strapping on his knee and looked slow for that first half of the year before he got dropped. Yeah, okay. Um, I don't know if it was knee or whether he just wasn't keeping up with the game. But yeah. I think he'll be fine, but uh, in defensive around that area, you're going to get heaps of guys, yeah. ten, 10 points more. No, yeah, I yeah. just don't see it for him. Um, he's just got a second part of his question. So we won't talk about the ones we've already talked about. So how do talented juniors like Spargo and Laurie crack it in that Melbourne midfield mix? Do you think they do it all? Uh, Spargo's a Spargo's small forward. forward yeah. yeah, He's not going to get into the midfield. Laurie is... An interesting one, but he's just too far down. Yeah, and they're not. It's not an old midfield. It's not an old forward line. It's it's going to be pretty hard decent ages, isn't it? Yeah. In. yeah, yeah. No, I, yeah. I agree. I can't see either of them doing too much fantasy wise anytime soon. Um, Daniel Aitken wants to know: um, Luke Dunstan, does he get a game? If finally gets injured, that's the only way. Yeah, but then you think Sparrow kind of just go straight in as well. Yeah, I think. I think they got Dunstan as because Viney had all those foot issues. Yeah. Previous last year he was fine. But, yeah. Um, I think they got him as insurance. Yep. Um, but yeah, not needed. Yep. Yeah. Nah, fair enough. VFL best and fairest. <laughs> well, anyways, that's a wrap for this week. So uh, thank you, Pugs. Uh, got anything to plug apart from our um, fa- uh, fantasy WhatsApp group? Really? <laughs> is that where people can find you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> pretty ex- much. That's an exclusive group, though. Only yeah, it is members. pretty exclusive. Only twelve members that yeah. one. So. Oh, that sometimes it goes down to eleven. Oh, it depends if cases or I quit. <laughs> essentially, <laughs> that's, right. so that's how it goes. Yeah. Anyway, so you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and TikTok at Keeper League Pod. Uh, get around our sponsors, Manscape. Use the code Keeper Twenty. Get 20% off and free shipping. Supporting our sponsors supports us. And speaking of supporting us, please sign up as a member if you can. Anyways, we'll talk to you on the next episode. Thank you, Pugs. Take it easy. No problems. Thanks for having me.